he has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through off the line, being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're talking football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition of Load Splits. Uh, as you'll figure out, another episode of just recorded uh, Jonathan Marshall. It's Thursday, the 17th, uh, about a little bit past 7.30. So as a Nets fan, I have an hour before uh, the Nets tip off game six. Uh, the hobbled Nets against the Bucks. If they could close it out in Milwaukee, that'd be great. So I'm to sweat through game seven. Um, but today, or this show, we are going to get through a... Uh, Ham McClure, Rashid Jr. Um, review. Um, by the time you're listening to this, uh, we have uh, pretty much all of the rookies done. I think the only thing you guys are going to be listening to after this is um, what Zach Wilson part four. Uh, you have Jonathan Marshall and you have Brandon Eccles. And after that, we're going back into free agents. Um, and I spoke about it on the last podcast. I literally just recorded and hit, and hit record again. Um, is that today the rumor was that the Jets are working on a multi-year deal with um, Morgan Moses. If that happens, you guys know here, I'll watch the entire season. I'll break it down um, to me personally. Um, again, I don't want to be repetitive or anything. It's again in a couple of days. But uh, I think the best five would be with Moses at right guard. Um, and Fant at right tackle. And then if, let's say, Beckton goes down, that's the most likely injury you have. You have Moses go to right tackle. You have Fant flip the left tackle like he did with the um, Seattle Seahawks. And you have GVR, Clark, Alex Lewis, you know, whoever it may be, go to right guard. Um, I think that's the best five they have on the field. If not, if they're signing for, for just to just be a tackle, they're wasting a little bit of money with Fant as the backup swing tackle, $10 million, which is an absurd amount of money. Um, at the same time, the Jets paid like Ben Ijelana a couple of years ago, like 5.5. They did the same thing. And if you're going to spend a little bit of extra money um, that you have because you cut Crowder, you know, uh, or not cut Crowder, sorry, you, re- you renegotiated with Crowder um, to be super safe in the offensive line to protect Zach Wilson, I'm okay with it. I prefer Moses to move to right guard. Is he going to sign with all the other options um, to be a guard over tackle? Probably not. Maybe it's a little bit of a fairy, uh, you know, uh, fairy tale thinking. But um, again, you know, that five million dollars. Maybe you're comfortable with Fant as a backup tackle at six, seven million dollars. But you know, you could you can kind of justify it with the the Crowder cut um, of his salary. So um, we'll see what happens. And if and if it happens, you know what we're we'll doing here. Um, might not be able to fit in the guys like the Ronald Blairs and the Sharon Neesmans of the world. If they do sign Moses, I'm going to try my absolute best to do so. Um, but we still have plenty of, of freedoms to get through, um, you know, with uh, the Sheldon Rankins and Tevin Coleman's and, you know, Keelan Coles and et cetera of the world, LaMarcus Joyner. Um, but getting into uh, Rashid Jr., I watched his 2019 – Stanford, UCLA, Utah, Washington, Arizona State. And I watched the only two games I could of 2020, which is Washington State and Oregon. Oregon, again, I said this on the Dunn review. It was so freaking foggy in that game. It was, it was hard to even see who was who on some place. So I didn't really record much of anything from those games. Strengths and weaknesses, I will um, get into at the end. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. We are back. Um, that was stupid by me. I, I was looking at the trans weaknesses list. I'm like, I didn't organize this. Like I did an article for, it. I had to have organized it, went back to the article, see if I organized it. And I realized that on my notes, I, I, I read all these things in my notes sections on my phone, on my computer. And I realized I just never deleted the, the, the bad, not the bad list, the, the unorganized list of trans weaknesses. So, uh, I did, I went to the article, did all that stuff, absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, uh, we have 22, 21, 22 plays of uh, Rashid Jr. Um, let's get into him. First play. He is number nine, all these plays. Um, a lot of on the edge mostly. We'll talk about some of the transfer mixes as we go through. Um, he is the sixth tech right here, which is over the tight end. Uh, 
six I would be inside just for people who aren't really familiar with the tight with with the tight end out here. Six, six I, seven. This is not seven inside shoulder. Um, but okay, let's watch. Uh, club a little tight. So it's almost hard to notice um, with a lot of these things. I, I think it just comes with um, time, like watching. But so he has a flexible upper body. Sometimes his lower body is a little bit tight um, in terms of like cornering and things like that. Um, this isn't really the best example of it, to be honest, but rushes the, the right tackle, um, runs his feet, and he's just reading the block, giving himself some time to, to, to read the block of the right tackle, uh, time the hands, um, does a pretty good job timing the hands paired with a, with a sidestep or there's a lateral step club arm over and, um, attempts to get on the quarterback. But you can see like, there are some guys who will hit this and explode right to the quarterback. He, he's a little, he rounds it a little bit trying to get to the quarterback gets pushed out of the play. Um, still creates, you know, pressure enough where, um, the quarterback may have to, you know, maybe he's, you know, in, in his head, he's, he saw it and rushed the throw a little bit. Ball is a little low. Um, receiver should have caught it on the less, but um, moving on. Good club move over. Good read of the punch from uh, Rashid Jr. Next play. Um, Rashid, uh, jerk, jerk, rip, sack. Okay. Edge right here. Stand up. Flexibility. He, he could play. I've seen him play two, three, four point stance. Um, anywhere from five tech to, to, uh, nine. I forget if I've seen him play inside or not. Maybe we'll see. Good play. Um, obviously rushes the left tackle, feels the open chest, sees the open chest, takes it both hands inside. Good hand placement, um, tight, tighter elbows. And now because of that hand placement, now he gets to control the chest, stand up the uh, the offensive tackle, who then um, reaches a little bit to just kind of get his hands back on uh, Rashid Jr. And as he as he reaches, <clears throat> you're going to see Rashid Jr. widen, rip or, or uh, jerk into a rip. And if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna land your hands on a guy, you don't want to stay tight and then jerk him because then you're jerking right in right into you. I want to be careful of my words. You're jerking him right into you and you're not going to have room to kind of get past his plane and, and, um, and get past his feet to get to the quarterback. So you want to create that, that distance between you. If you're going to, if you're going to jerk, because, um, one, you're giving yourself more room to work around him. And two, if he is trying to, to counter you and get hands on, him, um, he's going to be leaning. And now you're going to pull him into that lane. You're using his momentum, his lean against him. So a good job getting into the chest, creating ground, jerk, rip. You see some of the flexibility in the upper body there for sure. Find the quarterback, change his angle, get a sack. So I'll watch it again. Um, hand placement, distance creating, feeling it. Upper body flexibility right there to get past that. Uh, bull arm over. Okay. Uh, Rashid Bullar, I'm over. Okay. <clears throat> right here, call him a seven, call him a wide five, call him a nine. Uh, people go crazy with the techniques. Everybody calls it different. Like if some people, okay, well, he's outside shoulder of the tackle, but he's far out. He has to be a five technique. He's only, he can only be a seven if there's a, if there's a tight end, only be a nine if there's two tight ends. Like I don't, whatever you call it, call it wide five, seven, nine, you know, don't get tripped up over that. It's who cares. So right tackle gets out pretty quick on him. It's a pretty hard edge to, to pass, uh, to get past. It's a, it's a hard corner. So unless he's going to, um, you know, kind of give him like two steps inside, chop the outside arm and then, and then bend the corner, he could do that. Um, or obviously he, he, he does, he can take advantage of the, of the center or sorry, I don't know why I said, I said the center. I'm saying that center because I was freaking talking about Marshall uh, for, for an hour. So I'm used to saying him taking on the center because he was always zero tech, but him taking on the right tackle. Um, if he's having to get out into this 45 degree set, you know, quickly, like he is, um, he has the advantage of being able to, to throw his power into him because he's moving fast laterally. Uh, typically the chest will be open, um, et cetera. This chest is a little open. 
Good job landing his hands inside. Drop, you can see him create a ton of force through that left instep to lift the center or see, did it again. The right tackle up, push him past his plane. And now that he's popped back, what's open? The, the, the B gap is open. He feels that arm over, um, nearly gets into the quarterback, the, the right guard um, assists on the block. But um, I like it. You have to have, you have to have rush versatility. Like you can't just went outside, 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 inside, you get to run, you know, sometimes outside, sometimes inside, sometimes power through him and then inside or outside. So, um, I like the plan here of, of taking the, taking the open chest leverage, throwing him backwards. You can see him, you can see him lift off both of his feet, trying to get into his, into his anchor. But now, um, Again, you kind of have the, the 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 hips defeated. Now you're just working past upper body because he's a little bit out of whack right here, kind of going backwards but leaning inside, not completely linear. Use that to his advantage, um, and arm overs inside. Nearly gets in on the uh, on the uh, hit sack if he had held the ball for longer. Um, you tell I put it on Twitter. Five tech. Standing up, obviously, two point stance. It's a little bit tighter. Rushes inside, and there's a blitzer from the outside, and he's really just trying to pull him inside, um, just based on his alignment, and then kind of crossing his face. Maybe he can give the 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 edge rusher or the the blitzer cat blitz, whatever it is, you know, safety blitz. I'm not sure who this is on the outside. Um, a little bit more room to the outside. Right tackle doesn't fall for it, but regardless. He rushes the right guard. Um, I like the patience with his feet. He and he and he kind of like not short strides him, but um, he he shortens his strides to again to read the block. Like you 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 can do that both as a corner as a receiver, you know whatever it may be. Um, but you don't want to just run full stride, full full gate into people. Um, you could read blocks as well, and uh, he does a good job of reading the block. Times the punch. Plan off the outside, uh, the outside foot instep to get inside. So he feels that punch coming to the outside. Club arm over. Find the quarterback for a sack. There's a little bit of like hesitation right here from him, just to see if the quarterback was going to to run out to the outside, reverse pivot back here. Um, so he hesitates as he closes ground just to be able to change his direction. But uh, I like I like the. Um, the reading of this block and then, and then timing of the, of the club arm over club arm over, right? Club arm over. Yeah. So good job right there. Obviously hell of a sack. Watch, we'll watch it again one more time. This is 2019. We're watching 2019, uh, Rashid jr. All right. Next play number five. Sorry. I had to re, I had to make sure I recorded the, the game just in case I missed the first 10, 15 minutes, which I hope I don't. Um, Rashid closing speed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, top end speed burst all positives for uh, Rashid jr. So um, watch right here, stand up wide five, seven, whatever you want to call him. Again, and there, and I don't, I don't love the design by the offense to run an inside zone with an unblocked backside edge. Like if you're, if you're going to, run outside zone or, you know, if you're going to run zone outside zone, I get it leaving the, the edge unblocked, but inside zone, <laughs> especially if they've, which I'm, I forget if this is the first game of the year. It might've not been the first, I think this is maybe like the second or third game of their year in 2019. Um, but if you have any scouting, you know, and you see his burst in a straight line, um, I don't get how you do that, but good job by him. Just reading the mesh point, reading the mesh point, reading the mesh point, confirming that the running back has the ball, doesn't commit too early to the running back because he doesn't want the quarterback to get the edge on him. As he confirms he has the ball, turn on the speed, acceleration, thump. He has some thump to his game. I definitely, I definitely love his ability to, to hit guys. You see some of the speed right there and the, and the, and the hit. So good job with that uh, being disciplined to the backside and not committing early. Um, Etc. Uh, lack change of direction. Okay. Um, stand up right here. Wide seven nine. Okay. So um, unblocked again. 
unblocked again. And this is where you're just seeing some of the, like the, the lack of like a tackle radius, um, both because his, um, just because he does not the most like laterally athletic type of guy doesn't have the best change of direction. So, um, obviously unblocked, you want to see him be able to bring down the quarterback and the quarterback starts to step up in the pocket to avoid it pretty early. It's not, it's not like it's a last second thing, um, where Rashid has like almost, let's, let's call it a half a step. because he wasn't really, he didn't really see it there, but one, two steps to change his direction. One, two, two and a half, three steps to change his direction. He's not able to, um, so you want to see him be able to, to, to adjust his, his track right there to the quarterback and bring him down. Um, he's not able to, but that's a play you like 100% want to see him want to see him, uh, make. And obviously he's changing ground really, really, or he's covering ground really, really quickly because he's on blocks. So he's trying to get there, um, you know, ASAP, but at the same time, you, you want to see him be able to make that play. So next Club arm over, tackle for loss. Okay. We're seeing some effective club arm overs for him. Nine tech. We're at two tight ends, a tight end wing right here. <laughs> this is just timing. Uh, the obviously not the best block attempt by the by the tight end, but tight ends are not going to be the best blockers. One at UCLA and two, even at the NFL level at times. So um Good job just seeing that that block. He's trying to um, just kick him out and feels it, <laughs> jumps into a club arm over, you know, makes the, the tight end look kind of stupid and then find the, uh, the running back for the, for the uh, tackle or doesn't necessarily tackle him, but tackle for loss still. He doesn't bring him down, but they blow it dead. So good job just feeling that block. That's all that is. Athleticism. Club arm over, find him. Good job. Next, um, shed tackle for loss. Edge right here, stand up, two point. Now the Jets, I don't think unless he bulks up a lot, which I don't, I wouldn't recommend with his what he showed in terms of like his athleticism. I would, I'd recommend him. Um, just kind of stay at his way, maybe gain a little bit of muscle, but you don't want to make him like a 270 pound defensive end. I just don't think um, he, he would definitely lose some like the change of direction and stuff that he already doesn't have in, in, in spades. Um, so I think they'll use him in a, in a role. Uh, I don't think he'll really be a starter, um, but if they're looking for a guy to maybe play like wide nine consistently, then maybe he could, he could see a decent amount of reps, but here he is on the edge. Um, the right tackle looks to move to the second level pretty quickly here. So he doesn't like fully engage with, with uh, Rashid, but Rashid does a good job. One landing his right hand inside, checking the run, checking the mesh point, seeing the, the running back have uh, take the ball, taking a good angle to find the running back and pops him. Like again, he, he, he lays, he lays the wood. So um, the, the, the tight end, I mean, sorry, the, the right tackle is definitely pretty quick to just leave that block to, to work to the, uh, linebacker, uh, safety, whatever it may be. But, um, this is more about just the, the, the hand placement right here, the widening, the leverage, and then just finding the running back and you're going to see the pop again. Smacks guys. It doesn't look like he smacked him that bad because he kind of got, um, thrown into another player, but, uh, he popped him for sure. So next nine. Back to back arm over. So I guess this is two plays back to back. Um, stand up right here. Five tech. Okay, no, it's not. It's not that. Uh, what it is is just again him showing the flexibility to win inside and outside and kind of read the box where um, he is. Well, no, he wants to win inside regardless because they're they're blitzing the edge right here. So he wants to pull this guy inside, hesitate a little bit, so he can just come and clean off the edge. So uh, good job with that by Rashid. Again, short and just stride, reads the block, times it. Right tackle punches, club, arm over, work past it. Oh, shit. Now the right guard's coming into me. The right guard is, is sliding to his outside, so his momentum's taking away from the A-gap. The A-gap is open. So what does he do? Knows that, plants, 
engage club arm over. So uh, good job. First block was kind of designed for him to go inside. The second block was just more of a feel thing. Um, good job getting his hands on. Looks like his left lands underneath. The right lands somewhere on that left shoulder. Throws him to the outside, arm over, and uh, almost gets out on the sack. But uh, good job by him. And that happened because, again, what did he do? He engaged with the, with the right tackle, pulled him inside a little bit, and did exactly what we're talking about, softened the edge for the blitzer, the linebacker. So getting a little dark in here, but it is what it is. Um, play 10 up 21. Rashid said edge right here. Again, two point stand, stand up. He feels the running, the run going inside. Um, the, the right tackle kind of just rooting his feet down not really looking to kick him out, which don't necessarily love in terms of like defining gaps and stuff like that for the running back. If he had to bounce it, um, just based on their blocking scheme, whatever it is. Um, I don't love the rooting of the feet right there and especially allowing this, like you want to climb a little bit and then work to him. Um, or if you're going to root at least work up a little bit, but this is too big of an area in, in my opinion. Um, Rashid feels that again, takes the open chest base exploding off of the instep of the, of the outside foot to create that pressure, leverage. Look at that leverage game. He's winning there for sure. So completely stands the center up, or sorry, the, the right tackle up. I did that like freaking four times already. Sets, sets the edge. Has some flexibility to, to work inside here too because you have the, uh, the, the, the linebacker like exchange where he's working inside to the, to the outside right here, um, which they do some, for some like read option type teams as well. Um, whether it be like fill and folds or, or the scrape techniques, but um, regardless, good edge set, hands inside, leverage, pops them up. You know, completely controlling that gap, obviously. Um, winning right there. Gets someone in on the tackle, but uh, stands up the, uh, the right tackle and makes the running back. Um, obviously, just his, his rush to him. 11 Rashid rush high. I said this kind of with Marshall too, like Marshall, I didn't put a ton of bad plays because uh, I feel like watching defensive linemen, uh, whether it be outside linebacker or defensive tackle, nose tackle, watching them, you know, with hand placement or getting washed, like sometimes it gets a little boring. So I, I tend, uh, and I noticed this, I, I tend to be a little more positive with these guys reviews, but then I'll tell you in the strengths and weaknesses of what I, what I really think. And, you know, I like Rashid. Like if this is the Rashid we're getting, I think he makes a team as an outside linebacker uh, slash defensive end. Um, it's going to be a good battle between him and Phillips and Zuniga and, um, a lot of these guys. So watch them right here. Two point stance again, a lot of two point stance. Okay. And you're going to see him. And there, again, there are plays where you see him get into, um, into blocks with, with good leverage here again, pretty high up, um, in terms of his relationship to the, uh, to the tackle again, his, he's not affording himself the opportunity to get his hands inside, roll his hips, get under the block. Um, he comes in high without being able to roll his hips. The uh, tackle gets hand placement, gets into his anchor, and now Rashid is high and leaning. And what does he do? Snatch and trap, rip down those elbows, rip down those hands, and now he's going to fall you know, onto his face if, if, if the tackle um, got him to the ground right there, but he kind of catches him. So a little bit of a high rush. Not the best plan. Uh, match and stack tackle. Again, good, good job right here. He's just a uh, heads up. He's a six, six tech. Don't love this design by the, by the uh, Bruins either um considering like they're running an inside zone tight zone um i don't love this massive gap with and and this just this could be by design where they're they're kind of flexing out the tight end a little bit to widen the split and they're hoping that the defense is going to align um or rashid's gonna line outside shoulder to give to give again a, a wider space between him and the and the and, and the uh, running back that's not how it works out though and now he has 
inside leverage on an inside run on a tight end who's trying to block him. Uh, not the best scenario, but Rashid plays it well. Tight elbows, pretty good leverage, good base. Lift. Underneath, roll the hips. Roll the hips. Find the running back. Pull him through, jerk him. Get it on the tackle or make the tackle. So uh, good job. Good job stacking him. Matching the, the footwork widening as he steps inside. See the mesh point. Attack the running back. I said it on, I said it on the first podcast we recorded, which you're going to hear in a couple of days after this, actually. But uh, the bear with me. Um, you know, getting getting central air soon, but I have only have wall units now, uh, new house, and uh, this room doesn't have one, so I have to open the windows because otherwise it echoes in here, and then the sound quality is bad. So I have to deal with the heat a little bit, and for whatever reason, my nose gets stuck at you in the heat sometimes. Um, so deal with it. Uh, Rashid pass deflection. Where the hell is he? Oh, okay, sorry. He's off the left side here, so he's like a, he's like a wide five uh, nine technique. Call him a nine. Okay, whether it be his eyes are inside or he just feels himself lose this this block, um, hand shoot really late. Obviously, um, you gotta you gotta be better, better prepared for the uh, punch of the of the right tackle double double punch too, which is a little bit could be a little bit risky. It beats the hands, locks the hips out. Um, but gets beat. But again, if he was noticing the drop of the quarterback and noticing him looking to the right and going to, you know, with a quick, with a quick, uh, you know, quick set to throw the ball, then it's a better job. But obviously if he's trying to rush from right here and gets his stress control like that. It's not a good, good, um, good plan, but a uh, good job noticing that the uh, quarterback is going to throw the ball, timing it, timing the load up. You see some of the vertical uh, jump right there. Tips the ball. Um, good job. He's still he's looking for it in the air. Can he get a pick? Nope. 14 chase down speed. We talked about his his his, his speed in a straight line. Um, single back end. We're gonna see him right here. Two point stance again. Again, this is more more or lessly frowned upon than an inside zone with on black edge on the backside. Uh, outside zone, if, unless you, you'd expect your guy to hit his, his gaps quickly, um, and you don't expect the the backside edge to be necessarily this fast. But all it is is again him just stepping with the offensive line, seeing the outside zone coming, and you're going to see him kind of take it slow at first. You're seeing him take it slow. He's looking at the quarterback because he doesn't want you know to be a play action like a naked where the quarterback's going to fake this roll out and there's going to be a concept behind him rolling out to the right, you know, overs levels, whatever it may be, um, you know, going opposite of the initial flow of the offense. So he wants to um, make sure he's going to contain the quarterback if he does roll out. So you're going to see him kind of look at the quarterback, hesitate a little bit. Once he confirms that the, that the running back has the ball, turn on, turn on the, the, the speed um, and chase him down again. Good. Definitely good open field speed for, for Rashid. So I want to see that again. Slows it. Now he ex accelerates. You see that where it goes from like 80, not even 80, like, like 65, 70 to hundred right there. Brings him down. Good play. 15 of 21. Uh, Rashid said edge spinny, but like spin or spinny. You cannot add, you cannot save a file with spin as the, as the last word, apparently. Uh, edge right here, two point stance. Again, another situation. He just ready to run. Um, they're pulling a counter OF. He's kicking out. He's leading. Um, he just closes the edge a little bit, steps down. Good job taking on the block. Again, this is not an easy job for a guy who's he's pretty much standing still. He's moving a little bit inside um, to take on an offensive lineman who's pulling to kick him out. Um, but good job in terms of leverage, timing, instep, explode through him, lower the shoulders up and through, and pop him. Like he gets moved out a little bit outside, but it, but in terms of like um, maintaining your ground, he does a pretty damn good job. 
Now the running back's not going outside. So what is he going to do? He's going to spin, find them. He's, he's good at finding running backs on the second and third level. Like he takes good angles and he's, he, he's quick to close ground um, and find them. So I'm um, good awareness. He's not going outside now. I know that spin, find them, get in on the tackle. Watch one more time, but a uh, good job holding his ground and finding the running back for sure. Next, explode. Okay. Right here. A lot of two-point stance, obviously, from him. Again, similar to what we saw from a lot of these plays. I don't uh, – looks like a read option, though. So, uh, quarterback in a situation where you have Rashid at this point – You'd, you'd argue the running back has the advantage if he, if he, if he slams through that A-gap. Quarterback cannot pull it right here, um, so he hands it off. Rashid, again, does a good job shuffling with the offensive line, reading the mesh point. If you have a special, if you have a special edge or if you have an edge who's explosive, you don't have to do all the um, – which you would do still like to, but like the, 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 the exchanges and the fills and uh, the, the scrapes and all that stuff to handle um, – you know, these, the, which we'll get, we'll get into eventually if it, if it comes up or like, you know, a linebacker will fill, then a guy will come over the top and, you know, the quarterback might see, okay, you know, nobody's coming over the, uh, on the outside, but really it's a linebacker's job to, to scrape over the top and, and, and fill that edge. Um, but nonetheless, we'll talk about that when we see it in an NFL game. So good job. I hit it, but you have a special guy. He can handle it. Stay square to the mesh point. Confirms that the quarterback or the running back has the ball, and then you're just going to see him turn and explode. Turn, explode. Good job playing that read option. Okay. Five plays left. <laughs> dark and hell. Now nah, it's getting real dark in here. Uh, okay. That helps. A little bit of color on the screen helps. Um, two point stance again on the on the on the. Uh, on the left side of the defense, the the, uh, the right side of the offense. See the left edge. Okay. And they're just running a, uh, a TE stunt, which works out uh, well on this run play because the guard is blocking back to the um, – to number 90 and you have 56 who is squaring up the linebacker. So with him working back and with 70, uh, 70's assignment being Rashid jr. He's expecting him to find him on the edge and he's just going to cross his face because it's designed. And the, uh, the, ta the tackle is pulling the guard. So now he has a wide open a gap to just shoot through. So um, on some of these run plays, you know, these, these stunts, things like that are not only for pass, you know, they work great in run plays and they, and they do right here. Shoots the gap, find the get. You see the explosion in a straight line. It is very apparent. And uh, again, he's a he's a thumper. Like he he likes to hit guys, and he does you know well at it. So um, perfect time to call that that stunt right there. Good job, just closing ground, good angle. Completely demolishes the running back. Four plays left. Um, right here, wide five nine. Good, he has good snap timing. Um, and the ball, I guess the ball, yeah, it comes out right there, so I stopped it. But um, typically, he, he times it pretty well, and he's one of the first guys off the line. Like, for him to win that first step, or to pretty much be at or even with the tackle before the tackle even steps is obviously a huge advantage. Like, you see how much movement he gets before the tackle does, so... Snap timing is huge. He, he moves before any of the defensive linemen and he moves before any of the offensive linemen minus the center who knows he's snapping the ball. So you can see the timing um, right here. It's great. It's only him in the center moving. It's this, this whole motion. Only him in the center. So it's going to be really hard for the tackle to get into his kick slide and, and cut him off and, and set that hard, that, that hard edge and make him, you know, run him up the arc. So good job. Throws the rip to get past that arm. 
quarterback gets rid of the ball really, really quick, though. But a uh, hell of snap timing right there. That's that's really good. Almost gets him the uh, the sack or the quarterback hit. Uh, I think he hits the quarterback. I'm not sure, but whatever. Uh, three plays left. Stride, club, arm over. Again, screwed up a little bit, apparently, with this recording. Um, he is right here. Stand up, like a really tight five. Pretty much heads up with the tackle, which is, he's not a four, but he's a really tight five. Okay, I, uh, that is my fault, but this is, <laughs> this is nothing. Uh, my bad on that one. That's the first time that's happened in, what, the, the thousands of plays. Let me drag and drop that into my trash bin and then empty it. Um, the hell? Okay, sorry, I got to reorganize these a little bit now because that was not what I want it to be. Three plays left. So it's a 20. Oh, I said 20. I said 21 at the, at the, at, at, at the start. It was really 22, but I guess I knew <coughs> somewhere inside that that was going to happen. So three plays left now still. Didn't jip you. Uh, near sack, 2020. So this is some 2020 stuff um, right here on the edge. Um, and to me, his 2020 stuff, it, so he looked, I think I wrote it. I, I wrote it down in, in 2020. He looked like he was injured to me, to be completely honest. Like he just did not look as explosive. Um, he was used inside a little bit more. Like he, he would, it looked like he was playing more run and not really just unleashed to play the passer. And I'm not, again, you guys know. I'll be very honest. If, if he was the same, they asked him to do the same thing. If he didn't look injured and he just wasn't doing as well, I would tell you. To me, what looked like the biggest difference between 2019 and 2020, one, injuries. Two, he was playing a lot of like inside techniques. And then right off the jump, every single snap, he would rush outside and kind of like contain rush. Like he wasn't just rushing. He was more contain rushing. Um, we're going to be careful about your plane and how far you get upfield because you're looking at the quarterback and things like that. So that's what I saw from the two games I watched in 2020. Um, but here we're going to see a near sack of, of him in 2020. Again, so throws a little stutter steps just to read the, just to read the, the tackle the time, the punch chop the outside arm, come over with the, with the inside, just, just in case to, to, a not, not what's what the word I'm thinking about. Like I say, it's not, it's not, it's not a safe punch, but clubs it and kind of like a just in case punch as well. Just in case he gets his arm back on. Um, obviously the, the tackle delays or, or comes back over kind of later than Rashid thinks, but still good job with the club. And you, you can see him jump to the edge to, to soften his arc or to soften the edge throws the rip which moves the hand off of his shoulder, close ground. Again, you'd like to see him be able to, uh, to make, to, to bring down the quarterback for the sack right there, but he gets, he gets pushed in the back a little bit and gets, uh, gets off balance. But um, overall, again, I like him rushing the arc, stutter step, reading the block club, hop into it to soften the edge rip nearly get on nearly the sack, but doesn't obviously. Uh, two plays left. Eight twenty-seven. We're making good time, people. Uh, edge right here. Two point. Uh, looks like it was supposed to um be a uh be another te stunt. Just based on how the how the D tackle or the the three tech plays it, where he just kind of pushing right up field, um, more into where like the um, the tackle's going. So it looks like it's supposed to be a stunt. To me, if not, you know, hell of a job. Obviously, noticing this and chasing j just chasing the uh, the tackle on the uh, it's like a dart run, and um, but it looks like again, it just looks like a, des a design stunt. Uh, again, if not even more props, finds a running back, but is not able to bring him down. So we saw some of the explosive plays. I didn't read the top of this. It said look slow. So even though he has an open angle to the running back, 
just kind of in your head, like think about what we were showing before or what I was showing before in terms of like his explosion, straight line, bringing guys down um, to this play to me watching it now again. Um, he looked a little bit slow on this play to me. Like 2019, he was exploding through this right here and just rocking this guy, like a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of slow from him. Um, and, I, and I saw this a little bit in the, again, in the games I watched in 2020. I wish I had a bit larger sample size, but that's just what it looked like. 21 last play, run stuff, read the strengths and weaknesses. And then uh, again, after this, you guys are going to be watching Marshall Eccles and Wilson part four, and that's, and then we're done with the rookies. Uh, edge right here. He's like a, he's an eight eye right here. It's a weird alignment. He's an eight eye. They have the tight end. Oh, it's a, it's a, no, well, it's, it's a receiver. It's not, unless it's a tight end. It's a, if it's a receiver, whatever, but he's like a wide seven. If it's a tight end, eight eye, he's flexed out. It's a little bit, it's a little bit weird with the number system there, but um, edge right here, stand up. Again, in this game, I couldn't really record like anything because it got so foggy so freaking quick. But setting the edge feels the, uh, the, the chip coming from the receiver. Looks like a receiver. Gets hands on it. Times, uh, times the block well of the tight end. Dropping his weight. In step, shoulder into him. Not an ideal position, but... He is uh he's still able to work into his chest and get leverage. And that insteps the biggest part of it. Flip his hips. Right hand. Uh clubs him, kind of not really it's not really a true club, but he pushes him past him, pushes past his level. Sets a hard edge, just completely clear of it, clear of any block, finds a running back for uh again, a pretty big thump. So Nothing crazy, but widen, hands on, drop, shoulder into him. And then good, really good job with the, it really, it's the, it's the right arm pushing the tight end inside paired with him moving to the outside. Clears his hips, clear him. That's all it is. Just pushing by and then stepping by to get past his, his level. Then reading the running back and just finding him, pops him. See again, big shot. He's a thumper, even from pretty much standstill. He, he uh, likes to likes to hit guys. So that's it for that review. Again, I'm pretty short with the guys who are UDFAs. Um, you do, I'm sure people, maybe some want to see a 40, 50 play review of these guys, but try to keep them like an hour ish because they're UDFAs. Um, which give them respect. You know, I don't know any other person who's doing hour reviews on UDFAs regardless. But um, strengths and weaknesses, strengths. Um, some pass rush moves, including, um, chop. Okay. Sorry. Um, including chops, arm overs, rips, and ghost moves. Um, can win with inside and outside moves dropped into some shallow zones and played some man coverage. Didn't really put a lot of it in there. It wasn't anything crazy, but he can play like curl the flat and hooks. And I even saw him play some man coverage on tight ends NFL level. Do I want to see him playing, you know, man on guys like Gasecki and, uh, Kyle Pitts, um, you know, John o. Smith, et cetera. No, but if there's like a plotting tight end and you want to mix it up for rep or two, he can do that. So that's a positive, um, flexible upper body motor definitely plays hard, straight line, speed burst, um, hand strength brings some thump. We saw a lot of that flashes of good hands, leverage and run game. Saw some of that gets hands up for pass deflections, good pursuit angles, finds running back on second level. Well, snap timing will short stride to read block of offensive linemen. A lot of that stuff we saw, um, Weaknesses, uh, tight, uh, tight hips, inconsistent hand usage and run game can struggle to shed. Isn't overly uh, twitchy. I put twitches. Um, change of direction, bend, tackle radius is a little bit um, short. Uh, shorter arms, I believe. Um, at least it seemed like it. Uh, and that could be the tackle radius is also has to do with your change of direction as well. Uh, needs to play more linear. Again, we saw some of those or at least one of those reps were standing a little bit high um, and not really you know, playing through the guy, um, reps of him playing high and running pass game. Okay. Lacks a uh, pass rush plan at times, strength and trunk and lower body and unproductive 2020 for some of the reasons I named. Appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of days for another review. Uh, sorry for the, the darkness. Um, but again, 
wrap up the draft class. We're getting there. Um, it's not even necessarily like, Oh, I'm dreading through it. I just like to get things done. Like I can't, I, it's hard for me to say, okay, I got like 15 more reviews to do. Um, and just consistently know I have to do them, have to do them, have to do them. So once I start clearing my play a little bit, get a little relaxed, maybe at the end of July, take like a week off. Maybe, maybe you guys won't allow it, but I'll have so many reviews that I'll have stuff uh, in the queue. So appreciate you. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.